In today's video, we'll be taking a look at how you can easily manage all manner of WordPress website redirects with WP301 Redirect Pro, a plugin by Web Factory Limited, the same developers behind one of my favorite WordPress plugins, WP Reset. Now, if you haven't seen my videos on WP Reset and why I immediately integrated this into my freelance workflow, well, you can check out the video here and take a look at why. Okay, so let's just dive in and take a look at why WP301 Redirect Pro makes managing both intended redirects as well as handling common link errors and much more incredibly easy. Oh yeah, and did I mention that you can grab 10 licenses on the Pro plan for absolutely no money via AppSumo right now? No? Well, check out the link in the description and grab yourself that free copy while it lasts. So one of the coolest things you've got with WP301 Redirect Pro is if you accidentally insert a URL, type it in wrong, miss a space out, misspell it, with a lot of common er errors like this, you can easily have it automatically redirected without having to do a single thing. Obviously, this is massive if you've got an e-commerce store or information that you need people to get access to and people generally make a mistake on the URL, this will deal with it for you. Let me just give you an example. If we take a look at the URL at the moment, we're just looking at the default hello world. Let's just take out the space and just press enter. Bang, we still go to hello world. It automatically updates, redirects it for us. Let's just say we put something like hello worlds at the end of it. Press enter, automatically corrects it for us. What about if we accidentally put in a couple of L's, but we don't need them. We've got a sticky L key automatically redirect it for us. So as long as they're not crazy ridiculous, most common errors are gonna be rectified just by using this plugin, which means you don't have to give it a second thought. It should ultimately cut down on any problems with incorrect URLs and not actually seeing the right page and end up with a 404 error. So a really easy, really intuitive way of working with things that we don't have to do a single thing. The other piece of useful information is every time any kind of redirect happens, whether it's an automated redirect or whether it's something you've set up, it's logged. So if we come back into the 301 Redirects Pro dashboard, you can see we've got the redirect log. We've also got the redirects in the last 24 hours, 404 states, those kinds of things. If we come to the redirect log tab, you can see this will give us all the information about the redirects. So you can see where we've accidentally typed things in and what it was sent from and to, the IP address for that particular person that was accessing things, user agent and so on. We can delete these, but what you can see is you could use this then as information to take a look at where that is coming from, take a look at how you can deal with it, maybe set up a permanent redirect if it's something that is incorrect. You know, there's lots of different ways you can use this data. So we're getting that logged information that can be really useful. Now keep it on the same vein as this. Let's go and take a look at one of our posts. So we're back on our hello world. Let's just say we change the slug for this. So we update it and we forget to create an automatic update. So let's just say we're gonna change this hello world today. Okay, so once we update that, we'll get a notification at the top saying, you've changed the permalink for this hello world and it tells you what you changed it from and to. So now if you want to, you can create a redirect rule for this automatically. So we'll say create a redirect rule, pretty much done. There we go. So you can say you click here if you want to edit it. And that's now being created inside 301 redirects for us. So we can now configure this and get a little bit more granular if we want to. And you can see we can redirect from any query parameters, how we want to handle those. So you can see we have a range of options on there. We can redirect to, so we may want to change that. Regex, you've got case sensitive. Is it a permanent 301 redirect or is it another kind of redirect? You know, a temporary one, for example, while you're working on something else. All these are inside there. You can even drop tags in there so you can group your different redirect rules together based upon various different tags you may want to apply to it. Really, really easy. We can update that when we're finished and there is our rule set under the redirect rule section. And you can see it tells us when it was created, if it's active, because you can deactivate this, which is great. You've also then got the type. You've got the redirect from, the redirect to, the priority, how many times that's been used, any tags you've applied to it. And then you can edit this if you want to. You can also come in to verify the redirect or you can delete the redirect. So if you want to edit it, we can come in and those options are still available. So really, really easy to work with. And that's the thing. I think this is the good thing about this is it is very intuitive to work with. You can keep it as simple as you want, but if you want those more advanced things, they are available to you. 
Now, we're talking about automatic redirections and redirections and all those kinds of things. We need to also take a look at the settings panel because a lot of what we can do is control inside that panel. So we come into settings. We've got the auto redirect or auto direct 404. So this can be disabled if you don't want this to be available. And this would then remove that automatic redirection if someone accidentally types in something that's close to what you expect. You've got a page in your site, but not exactly perfect. You can also then choose where that's active. So if you want to activate it only for posts and pages and nothing else, you could do just that. You can see then we've got things like the 404 page so we can add a custom page in here if we want to. If we want to have email reports to send through to us, we can send those through. So you can see exactly what's gone on your site over a certain period of time. Great if you you have multiple people that are managing things, you might want to have that report auto-generated and sent to the administrator of the website who might not be the person that deals with the content and so on. Well, those options are available. You can also go through and set up how long the log is retained for, all those kinds of things. So most of this information should be pretty self-explanatory. There's information underneath about each one of these entries so you shouldn't get stuck on anything. So great to see all those there. If you come to advanced, you can say we can disable all redirections. So for whatever reason, you may have times where you want to do that, where well, you could disable everything in one go without having to manually go through and disable each individual redirection. And the same then, disable for logged in users, delete all tables and options when the plugin is deleted, which is something you know that I really like to see. I like to see that whenever a plugin is removed, it takes all of the things that it puts into your site, your database, all taken away with it. So always a positive for me to see that inside there and I would always enable that and then you can recreate and reset your tables if you want to so if you're testing things out and then you're ready to go live and you want to use this properly well you could clear all your redirections you could reset the table and then you could start with a fresh slate knowing that you're going to be working with the live data not necessarily the test data you might have been using on a development site so we'll save those changes to commit that to deleting all options and we'll come back into our settings and then finally we have tools so you can see we can import, so we can import any kind of set of redirects and things. We might be setting up generic redirects across basic sites, and then we'll fine tune and add extra things on. Well, you could do that kind of thing inside here, and you can also export this. So you could be exporting it for whatever reason, wiping everything out, starting again, then you want to import just the data. You know, there's lots of different ways and reasons you may want to use these. So great to see these tools are all available to you. Now, along with just the standard redirects that we kind of expect this to do, we can do a lot of other things as well. Let's just say we are an affiliate based website and we have lots and lots of affiliate links. You don't want to have to go through and create redirect rules for every single one of those. So there's a really easy way of use, use sort of regular expressions to create something that is a catch all for your particular affiliate links. Let me show you how that works. What we're going to do is we're going to add a new redirection rule. Redirection is enabled, and what we're going to do is we're going to put in a little block of code. So I'm going to drop that inside there. Now, what we're interested in is two parts of this. The first part is kind of like the trigger that says if forward slash affiliate, and then after that, you put in the URL you want to go to, for example, elementor.com, then what it's going to do is it's going to pass that over to the redirect rule. So let me just show you how this works. So what we'll do is we'll put the normal HTTPS inside there, but instead of putting anything else in, we're going to put in the variable in this example, URL. So we're going to put this inside square brackets, URL, close the square brackets. So what that's going to say is that if any link on our site is forward slash affiliate, forward slash, and then elemental.com, for example, redirect it to elemental.com. Might sound a little confusing, but I would recommend check out the documentation for the plugin, which should have some more examples and probably explain it a little better than I do. What we do need to do, though, is turn on the regular expression option because we're basically using an expression at the top. Other than that, you can leave everything else as it is. We'll drop in a little tag and we'll say this is an affiliate redirect so we can see it immediately and we know exactly where it is. And we'll add that rule. So there's our new rule being applied. So let's test it out now and make sure that it works. So we're going to come over to our hello world test we're going to come to the address bar at the top and we're just simply going to put in affiliate forward slash elementor.com now once we hit enter we'll be redirected to elementor.com and there we go the url has now changed to elementor.com 
and then we can track that information if we want to with various different methods. So we could use this to tidy up links, create affiliate links, create all sorts of redirects without having to manually input every single one of those affiliate links wherever we want to use them. We just use this particular rule, forward slash affiliate, forward slash the URL you want to use. There's your regular expression and it should trigger correctly for you. Now, there's two more quick things that I want to show you. First of all is to deal with licensing. Licensing when it comes to any of the plugins developed by this same company, WP Reset, WP301 redirects and so on, we can use the keyless activation, which is really, really easy and great if you want to do this without having to remember passwords and codes and all those kinds of things, especially for your clients. So what you can do is you can click to add a new license, and then you can choose the option for either a key option, which is the standard way of doing it, and then supply the key, or you can base it upon a domain. So you could drop in the domain for this particular website. So one of your clients, for example, choose whether this is going to be valid forever or a period of time. If you want to put any purchase information, notes and so on, whether you want to white label it, you can do all those kinds of really super useful things. And then once you're doing that, you can say create and activate license. That will then be associated with a domain. So then all your client needs to do is log into their, their website, go over to 301 redirects and click on keyless activation. Once we do that, that's going to contact the WP Reset 301 servers, check to make sure that this URL, this domain is registered and licensed, and then it's all done. And you can see our license all set up, completed for us. Really, really easy. The other benefit of this is, let's just say, for example, a client for some reason doesn't pay you or you stop working with them and you want to revoke those licenses, well, you can do that just as easily. You can come through to your licenses and what you can do is you can edit that license or you can delete it. So you can easily get rid of a license key or you can manage the sites that are associated with it if you have a license that's being spread across multiple different websites. Really, really easy and like I say, one centralized location to deal with all of these issues. Now, let's say you don't want that said client to know that you're even using WP301 redirects by a different company. You want to sort of pass this off as your own software, your own product, your own service, whatever. Well, you can white label those licenses. So you simply come into your license option, choose the white label option, and then hop over to brands. And inside the brands, we can then configure the logo that's going to be used, the colors that are going to be used, any links that are going to be used throughout it. So you can easily create your new brand or use a template. So we can say, let's add a new brand in. What we're going to do is we're going to just name this one WP301 redirects by WP Tuts. There we go. You can change the, the name if you want to. You can change the plugin URL. So we can change that to whatever we want to. We can change the company name. So we'll just change this to WP Tuts. Company site URL. Again, we'll just set this to WP Tuts again. So WP Okay. Then we can change our main brand color and we can just pick any color we want from there. So let's just set this to a dark reddish orange just for this example. And if we want to upload a logo, we can do just that. Don't worry too much about that at the moment. If you want to add any custom CSS in, you can also do that inside here. So you could really fine tune this down to the nth degree. Any content, all those kinds of things are available. So we can hit create a brand and then we can associate that. So let's create our brand. Now we take a look at our brand. You can see there's our new brand, our colors, all those kinds of things. We just simply need to now come over to our licenses. From there, we're going to edit this license. We're going to scroll down, enable white label, and then change the custom brand into what we just created, which is the 300 redirects by WP Tuds. We'll update that license. And then we head back over to our site. We can refresh this. And you can see there's our new custom logo, custom information our 301 redirects, any links we've set up. So we've now completely white labeled this, branded it as our own service and product and removed anything to do with WP redirects. So if you want to do the white label inside of things, you've got access to doing just that. Really, really simple. Now, if 10 licenses isn't enough for you and you want to grab more, please consider using my affiliate link in the description. It costs you no more money, but I do get a small percentage of the sale and helps me create more content like this for you in the future. As always, if you found this video useful, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button, smash the subscribe button and slap the bell icon. But if you didn't find it useful, well, you can hit that thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. As always, all of the applicable links for everything I've covered are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.